You know, I used to think haunted houses were just a load of bunk. You'd hear all these stories about creepy old mansions, their hallways echoing with ghostly whispers, and I'd just roll my eyes. But that was before I stumbled upon the Minton house. Now, I can't shake the feeling that some things are better left unexplored. So, come sit down, and let me tell you my eerie tale. It all started when I got a call from my friend Alex. He's the adventurous type, always chasing the thrill of the unknown. He'd heard rumors about the Minton House, a dilapidated mansion on the outskirts of town. It had stood there, shrouded in mystery, for generations. The locals whispered that the place was cursed, and no one who ventured inside ever came out the same. Alex was determined to uncover the truth about the house's dark history, and he had roped me into joining him. I couldn't resist his enthusiasm, and honestly, I thought it would be a bit of an adventure. Besides, it was just an old house, right? The mansion sat on a hill, looming like a specter against the grey sky. Its façade was a patchwork of crumbling stone and rotting wood. Ivy had claimed the walls, and the once grand windows were shattered or boarded up. We stood at the entrance, and for a moment, I hesitated. A chill ran down my spine. I'd heard tales about the unexplained events that had unfolded here, and doubt began to gnaw at me. But Alex was relentless, so we pushed the door open, and the hinges creaked like the groans of a restless soul. The air inside was damp and heavy, and the scent of decay clung to every surface. It was as if the very walls exhaled a sigh of sorrow. We wandered through the darkened halls, our footsteps echoing like whispers from the past. Dust swirled in the feeble sunlight, but managed to break through the grimy windows. In some rooms, the walls were adorned with faded, peeling wallpaper, while in others, the plaster had crumbled to reveal the mansion's skeletal frame. My heart pounded in my chest, and I couldn't help but feel the weight of history pressing down on me. Every step I took seemed to stir memories long forgotten, and I could almost hear the faint laughter of children or the murmur of a long-lost dinner party. That's when things started to get really bizarre. We entered a room the grand piano, its keys covered in a layer of dust. Alex suggested we test it out, and as he pressed a key, the piano responded with a haunting melody that seemed to emerge from nowhere. I spun around, but there was no one there. It was as if the very soul of the mansion was trying to communicate with us. My unease grew with each passing minute, but Alex was undeterred. He claimed this was all just some elaborate hoax set up by the locals to keep people away. I wished I could believe him, but the way the air in that place seemed to thicken with every step was undeniable. We ventured deeper into the mansion, and that's when we found the basement door. It was half open, revealing the yawning darkness that seemed to beckon us. I urged caution, but Alex's adventurous spirit was unyielding. He descended the stairs, his flashlight revealing a crypt-like chamber filled with ancient books, dusty artifacts, and strange symbols etched into the walls. As we explored, we stumbled upon a diary, its pages filled with the mad scrawlings of a previous resident a man who had lost his mind to the house. His rambling spoke of supernatural forces, of a malevolent presence, that had taken hold of the mansion, driving him to the brink of madness. My heart raced, and I couldn't shake the feeling that we were not alone. That's when the house seemed to awaken. The air grew colder, and a whispering wind surged through the corridors. Shadows danced on the walls, and eerie voices filled the air. Panic surged through me, and I shouted for Alex, but when I turned around, he was gone. I searched frantically, calling his name, but there was no sign of him. It was as if the house had swallowed him whole. I had to get out of there. I made a dash for the exit, but the mansion's layout seemed to shift and change before my eyes. Doors led to nowhere, hallways stretched into infinity, and the walls seemed to close in. Just when I thought I was lost forever, I stumbled upon a room with a large mirror. My reflection was pale and distorted, and behind me, I could see a sinister figure looming. I turned, 
and there he was, the man from the diary, his eyes filled with malevolence. I bolted from the room, finally stumbling upon the front door. The moment I stepped out, the mansion seemed to vanish behind me, leaving nothing but an empty hill. I was shaken and alone, with no sign of Alex. I had no choice but to call for help and report him missing. The police arrived, and I told them everything, from the eerie happenings in the mansion to the diary of the madman. As they began their investigation, I couldn't help but wonder about the house and its sinister secrets. And then came the shocking revelation. The police found records that the mansion had never existed. There were no deeds, no historical documents, no proof of its existence. It was as if the Minton house had been a mirage, a figment of my imagination. I was left baffled and horrified. Had I hallucinated the entire experience? But then, as I left the police station, I received a message from an unknown number. It contained a photo, a photo of Alex, pale and ghostly, standing in front of the Minton house. My mind reeled, and the true horror of what had transpired hit me like a sledgehammer. The Minton house was real, and so were its malevolent spirits. Alex was trapped within its cursed walls, and I had escaped. The sinister twist in this chilling tale was that the mansion had erased all evidence of its existence, trapping those who entered in its malevolent grasp. So, as you listen to stories of haunted mansions, remember that some horrors are beyond our comprehension, lurking in the shadows of the unknown, waiting to ensnare those who dare to seek the truth. Be cautious, dear reader, for the line between reality and the supernatural is thinner than you might imagine, and the Minton House serves as a chilling testament to that fact. Let me take you on a journey, one I never expected to undertake. It's a story that still sends shivers down my spine whenever I recollect the chilling events of that fateful night. So, make yourself comfortable, dear reader, and listen to my tale of the mysterious estate that entrapped me and replicated my essence. It all commenced on a gloomy, rain-soaked evening, as if the heavens themselves were forewarning me of the horrors awaiting. I had recently inherited a grand old mansion from a distant relative I'd never even heard of. The place was situated in the heart of a secluded forest, where darkness clung to every corner, and the ancient trees seemed to murmur secrets. I arrived at the mansion as the sun was setting, casting eerie shadows across the overgrown garden. The house stood there, its facade grand and imposing, yet worn down by time. The wood had decayed in places, and ivy crept up the walls, giving it a fallen appearance. I entered with a sense of curiosity mixed with unease. The interior was a peculiar mix of grandeur and neglect. A colossal chandelier hung in the entrance hall, its crystals casting refracted rainbows that danced on the walls, but the ornate wallpaper was peeling, and the air was heavy with the scent of dampness and decay. As I made my way through the labyrinthine hallways, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Shadows seemed to dart around the corners of my vision, and strange whispers echoed in the distance. My footsteps echoed like heartbeats in the vast empty rooms. Night descended like a shroud over the mansion, and I decided to retire to one of the bedrooms. The bed was a relic from a bygone era, with a heavy wooden frame and moth-eaten drapes. The window offered a view of the moonlit forest, casting eerie silhouettes in the room. I tried to shake off the unease that had settled over me and fell into a fitful sleep. In the darkest hours of the night, I awoke with a start. The room was pitch black, and a bone-chilling cold had seeped into my bones. My heart raced as I realized I wasn't alone. In the dim moonlight, I could make out a figure standing at the foot of my bed. It was me, but not quite. It was a clone of me, identical in every way. Who are you? I stammered, my voice barely more than a whisper. The clone's lips curled into a sinister smile. I am you, and you are me. Welcome to our new existence. Fear coursed through my veins as I watched the clone move with unnatural grace. 
He extended a hand, and it was as if I were looking into a mirror. Our hands touched, and I felt a surge of icy energy pass between us. The clone's malevolent grin widened. You're trapped here, he hissed. And now, I am free. With that, he vanished into thin air, leaving me alone in the darkness. I couldn't believe what had just happened. My mind raced, grappling with the impossible. The mansion had somehow cloned my soul, and now there was an entity, a version of me, that was unleashed upon the world. As dawn broke, I ventured out of the room, searching for any signs of the clone, but the mansion had a mind of its own, shifting and twisting its layout as if it were toying with me. It was as though it wanted to keep me within its walls while the malevolent clone roamed free. I found a room filled with mirrors, and it was there that I realized the full extent of the horror. Each mirror contained a reflection of the malevolent clone, each one more sinister than the last. It was as if the mansion was taunting me, showing me the countless iterations of my malevolent twin. The hours turned into days, and I was locked in a never-ending nightmare. I became a prisoner in my own body, a captive in this haunted mansion. The malevolent clone continued to torment me, appearing at random moments with a chilling smile. He revealed in the anguish he was causing, and I knew that he would stop at nothing. I tried to devise a plan to escape, but the mansion's shifting layout and the malevolent clone's relentless pursuit made it almost impossible. The mirrors seemed to multiply, their reflections twisting and warping until I couldn't tell which was the true clone. In a desperate bid for freedom, I shattered one of the mirrors, hoping it would release me from this nightmare. But instead, it multiplied the malevolent clone, each one emerging with a wicked grin. The mansion seemed to laugh at my feeble attempt. Days turned into weeks, and my spirit began to wane. I had resigned myself to my fate, trapped in a hell of my own making. But then one day, as I gazed into the mirror, I saw something different. The malevolent clone's smile had faded, replaced by a look of terror. And that's when it hit me. The malevolent clone wasn't free. He was just as trapped as I was, a prisoner of the mirrors. The mansion had played a cruel game, cloning my soul and locking us both within its walls. I had been so focused on my own suffering that I hadn't realized a malevolent clone's torment. With this realization, a plan formed in my mind. I would confront the malevolent clone and offer him a way out. I approached one of the mirrors, and there he stood, fear in his eyes. We're both trapped here, I said. We can't escape this nightmare unless we work together. The malevolent clone hesitated, but he eventually nodded. We devised a plan to shatter all the mirrors at once, breaking the mansion's hold on us. It was a risky move, and the mansion fought back with all its malevolence, but together, we were able to succeed. As the last mirror shattered, I felt a rush of freedom, as if a weight had been lifted. The malevolent clone and I were united once more, our souls no longer divided. We fled the mansion as it crumbled to the ground, its malevolence defeated, but the horrors of that place would never truly leave us. The malevolent clone and I shared a bond that could never be broken, a connection to the malevolence of the haunted mansion. It was a chilling reminder that some nightmares, once unleashed, can never be fully contained. So, as you hear tales of haunted mansions, remember that the darkest horrors may not be the malevolent spirits that reside within but the darkness that lurks within ourselves. Be cautious, dear reader, for the line between reality and the supernatural is thinner than you might imagine, and the mansion serves as a chilling testament to the power of perception. Ever since I was a kid, I've been a fan of the supernatural. You know, ghosts, haunted houses, all that good stuff. So when I had the chance to buy a mansion, that had a reputation for being haunted, I jumped at it. Little did I know that this adventure would take me on a roller coaster ride of fear and skepticism. The mansion was a beautiful, newly built structure in a secluded part of the countryside. A grand stone facade and looming turrets gave it an air of old world charm. 
and the inside was a blend of classic elegance and modern convenience. It was a steal too good to pass up, and despite the rumors of hauntings, I moved in with high hopes. The first few weeks in the mansion were idyllic. The place was like something out of a fairy tale. It was surrounded by lush forests, and the large windows let in ample natural light. I relished in the solitude, my nearest neighbor a mile away, but it wasn't long before strange things started happening. At first, it was subtle, a creaking floorboard in the dead of night, a whispering wind in the hallways. I brushed them off, chalking them up to the old house quirks. But as the days passed, the disturbances grew more pronounced. Footsteps echoed when I was sure I was alone, and doors slammed shut on their own. My friends warned me about the place, making jokes about ghosts and spirits. They'd heard all the stories, but I didn't believe them. I thought it was just their way of scaring me, having some fun at my expense. After all, I had spent my life watching horror movies and reading those stories. I wasn't an easy person to spook, but one night, as I was working in my study, I saw it, a shadowy figure that passed by the doorway. I jumped up and rushed out, adrenaline coursing through me. I searched every room, but there was no one there. It was as if the mansion had played a trick on me. My skepticism began to wane. I couldn't ignore the bizarre happenings any longer. I decided to do some research on the history of the mansion and the area. What I found sent chills down my spine. It turned out that the mansion had been built on the site of an old cemetery, which had been moved to make way for the new structure. The place had a dark history and tales of ghostly apparitions had persisted for decades. That night, I lay in bed, unable to sleep. The creaks and groans of the house took on a sinister tone, and I felt as though I was being watched. Suddenly, I heard a voice, a whisper so faint I could barely make it out. Get out! I bolted upright, scanning the room, but there was no one there. The voice had been nothing more than a whisper on the wind, and yet it had filled me with a profound sense of dread. The following days were a haze of fear and paranoia. I tried to recall the strange occurrences, but they always seemed to happen when my camera or phone was out of reach. It was as if the mansion knew I was trying to document its malevolent tricks. The turning point came on a stormy night. The wind howled outside, and the rain lashed against the windows. I was in the living room, reading a book, when the lights flickered and went out. Panic surged through me, and I fumbled for my phone's flashlight. As I scanned the dark room, I saw them, figures, ghostly and translucent, floating through the air. They were dressed in period clothing, their faces twisted in agony. The room was filled with their mournful wails, and I felt a chill run down my spine. There was no denying it anymore. The mansion was truly haunted. I decided to leave, to pack my bags and never look back. I couldn't take it anymore. But as I made my way to the front door, it slammed shut with a deafening crash, the lock turning on its own. I was trapped and the ghostly figures closed in on me. In that moment of sheer terror, I couldn't believe it. The stories were true, the rumors about this mansion and its tormented spirits. I had mocked them all, dismissed the accounts as mere superstition, but now I was living a nightmare. As the apparitions drew nearer, their cold ghostly hands reaching out for me, I couldn't help but think of the irony. The skeptic, the horror aficionado, now faced with the very real presence of the supernatural. But then, as they closed in, something strange happened. The apparitions seemed to flicker and waver, their mournful wails turning into garbled whispers. It was as if they were disintegrating, fading away before my eyes. The mansion was playing another trick, and this time, it was messing with my sense of reality. In a moment of clarity, I realized the truth. The mansion wasn't haunted, it was a master of illusion, a place that could manipulate my perception and make me believe in the supernatural. The apparitions were nothing more than tricks of light and sound, designed to terrify me. As the last of the ghostly figures vanished, the lights flickered back on, 
and the front door swung open. The mansion had released me from its clutches, its malevolent illusions shattered. I left the mansion that night, never to return. The experience had shaken me to my core, and I knew I would never forget the horrors I had witnessed. It was a lesson in the power of the mind, in the way our beliefs and fears can shape our perception of reality. As I drove away from the mansion, I couldn't help but laugh at the irony of it all. The skeptic had been taught a chilling lesson in the thin line between reality and illusion. The mansion had played tricks on me, and I had fallen for every one of them. In the end, I had experienced a horror beyond anything I had ever imagined, one that had tested the limits of my own beliefs. So remember, dear reader, that not everything is as it seems, and sometimes, the scariest things are the ones we create in our own minds. Be cautious, for the line between reality and the supernatural is thinner than you might imagine, and the mansion serves as a chilling testament to the power of perception 